Hi and welcome back to Bike Speed. So this week we're dealing with this specialised road bike. We're going to fit a new chain on this one. We're going to fit new handlebars, new bar tape, sort out some internal routing through the handlebars and also sort out this problem with the chain being too long for the bike. You can see here in the smallest gears how that bounces and, and is slack. It's actually because it's too long. Now that's quite a dangerous thing really on a bike of this nature because if that bounced when you're riding along this is a DI2 based bike and it can destroy the drivetrain, you know, that can come off the chain ring and jam up and it can be ride ended. We also had this issue with the headset bearings, look how tight they are, that front wheel is bouncing the entire frame along through the bike. You would never ride this bike with no hands as it was and it's actually extremely dangerous as it is because it's so tight that the bike will be tramming and catching bumps and will be very very hard to ride. So. I initially, my initial assessment was to weigh out what the reasoning for that was and as you can see just literally slackening off the pre-tensioner was enough to free up that handlebar. So I then felt the bearings, they all felt okay so actually it was purely down to pre-tensioning. The customer also asked me just to lower this stem a centimetre so that's what I just did there, just swapped around the spacers and then just sort of tightened up everything on that headset initially. We're actually fitting aero handlebars on this so we're working towards stripping it down so all the DI2 cables and junctions and everything have got to come out of these handlebars ready for the new bars. The old uh, handlebars kind of covered the cables with tape so it was actually pretty straightforward to remove but fitting the new bars because they're aero all the cables have and brake pipes and everything have to go inside the handlebars so we had to strip everything down here and begin to work our way through the process of getting the new bars on and rerouting all the cables, all the brake cables, bleeding down the brakes and everything else along the route with that. So you can see here I'm just using a park tool internal routing aider I suppose uh, cables that are stiff that are magnetic so you can get them through to where you need them and then you can put your new cables on. I taped the old DI2 cable to the brake so that I could get the brake and DI2 cable through in one pull which was kind of handy really so just made my job a little bit easier along the way. You can see on the headstock there I've only put two bolts in because these handlebars had to come on and off several times during this process. And we put new ferrules and, and ends on the brake pipes ready for bleeding through. Now this job, just changing the handlebars, you know in the course of this video it all looks very straightforward and very simple. This was pretty much a full day's work just to get these handlebars changed. It was an extremely time consuming, extremely problematical process that often it is. Often, you know, people come in, oh, can you just? And it's the can you just jobs that end up the ones that are the most time consuming and problematical. You have to sort of solve things along the way, maybe change the way you've done something just to get it right the second time. And, you know, it's, it's very, very, like I say, very time consuming a job like this. But quite rewarding equally you know it's quite quite good fun doing a little job like this so you might notice there i also just put some grease on the threads that just helps everything tighten up when it's in you know so tight against the handlebars and everything it just means there's no strains on any threads or the way you're doing things we had to replace the double-sided sticky tape on these end fittings because they are self-adhesive and that's what holds them to the bars so we took off the old cleaned them up new tape on there glued them to the handlebars you know, even things like that, that kind of work, you know, it could be an hour later before you've you've even got there. And then once we've got everything through, we these handlebars had these little end covers on them to make them fully aero so that all the cables couldn't be seen from the top. We then put those on and that was everything there. Now obviously we've got to bleed the brakes, so out come the brake blocks. We can do some preventative and servicing work along the way with that. So I put in new brake fluid. You can see the old drain through there. If you look at the bottom of the bottle, how grey and dirty that is so this actually benefited from having a brake fluid change anyway you can see the fresh new fluid coming through there put a little block in there flick the hand the brake lever to burp out any bubbles at the top end there and that's now ready to go give that little clean up with some blue roll yeah then we're now ready to just give that a proper clean up with brake cleaner so we're happy that everything's right and as it should be so i just use the brake cleaner just to really clean up the parts and then while the pads are out we can clean and service those so initially a little bit of wire brush and a little skim on our wheel and you can see here the one on the right looks like a brand new pad. The one on the left has got a little bit of road film ingressed in there. 
a little bit of copper grease on the back of the pads that helps with the squealing and also a little bit of copper grease on the thread of this pin because they're very very prone to corroding and seasoning the caliper that just is a preventative measure now we've mentioned this in other videos how you can get effectively like a record player effect on these where the grooves on the disc can create squealing it's one of the biggest reasons for your squealing brakes is your disc actually being grooved and just singing it just zing, you know and it just causes that squealing noise so we rubbed that down and then just used a bit of brake cleaner again on the surfaces just to clean off any debris you can see there even though it's been rubbed down how you just get that blackness off the brake surfaces so it's important just to clean them and then we just talked up to 40 newton meters the disc in the middle of the wheel before we removed the rear now you can see how this cassette we spoke about this last week how we couldn't get the cogs off of this you can see how corroded that is in there so we just had to work these off individually one by one and then give that a clean up this corrosion is dissimilar metal it's because that was never greased when the original cassette was put onto this hub so we just work all those off you can see all that corrosion there and yeah it's pretty nasty and that's only because someone didn't grease this when they put it together so we just get the cassette in the degreaser and clean that up at the same time clean off this corrosion clean off the center just you know you can just see and just work away with a little microfiber towel and some degreasers and some brake cleaners and things and that comes away you know begins to clean up nicely now with some soapy water just give that a wash down and then all the parts are ready to be rebuilt this week's video is sponsored by Sports Barista. This is coffee for the sportsman. This is coffee in a bag. So you brew it over two or three minutes. Each bag contains 10 grams of coffee and has a lovely slow releasing caffeine that lasts for up to six hours. We've made it here in a bottle. It's perfect for your events where you can put it on your bike. Sports Barista are offering discount to you. Use our discount code BIKESPEEDS50 to get discount off their trial pack. And if you love that, which you will, you can then sign up for their subscription of coffee. So thanks again to Sports Barista for sponsoring the channel. And check out the link in the description below and use our discount code BIKESPEEDS50. So once I've cleaned down the cassette, I then just give this a dusting with Molten Speed Powder. Molten Speed Powder, I just like putting that on the cassettes because it just gives them a little finish. It just presents my work well. It's supposed to save a few watts and it also just gives a nicer shift initially. So I always just do that whenever I'm doing a, a waxing on a chain. I always dust them down with Molten Speed Powder afterwards and that's just what I was doing there with the cassette. And put the lock ring on again, 40 newton meters, the same as the disc in goes our chain into our Molten Speed Wax. You can see it sizzling away there as it really gets in the rollers. I often see comments on the internet about people who are saying they're waxing chains with a wax that they rub on afterwards. That never gets in the rollers. I, I'm a firm believer in when you're oiling a chain, you use a very thin oil to get in the rollers. And when you're using a molten wax, that just soaks and pours into the rollers of the chain. It's the rollers of the chain you're trying to lubricate. You're not trying to make the chain oily. You're trying to lubricate the rollers. And it's a little bit of a misconception with lubricating chains in whichever way you choose be it wax or oil you need to get into the rollers and that's the key that you're trying to achieve so now we just clean up the drivetrain because we have now got this nicely freshly waxed chain so we just make sure that we clean off any debris or dirt that's already on the group set so this was actually a previously waxed chain anyway so uh, there wasn't a lot of cleaning to do and then we just lubricate the di2 front derailleur and rear derailleur which is using a thin oil on the pivot points there these are pretty much, they almost don't need oiling, but it's just a good practice just as they get older, they can need that. And then again, the through axles, we also lubricate those because I've, I've had those where they stick inside the hub. I actually extracted one of those for a friend of mine and it was a real problem to get that out, but it's all down to preventative measures with your servicing. And then on goes our chain. Now we're gonna size this correctly so that it isn't too long for the bicycle or too short. So you can see there now we've got a little bit of tension on this rear derailleur so it's not slack and it's got the tension which means that when you end up in these small rings, small gear, it's going to stay on the bike and not bounce around and cause a problem. But because we've altered it, just do a little B adjustment there on the B screw. You, you adjust that according to the length of your chain so because we'd altered that we needed to do a little B screw adjustment. And then we just plug in the DI2 into our computer just to make sure there's no firmware updates and in this instance Everything was up to date, so that was a good sign. So now we just start our servicing. Before we do the bar tape, we just want to run through everything, make sure it's all okay, because we don't want to have to disturb that for any reason. So we're working our way through, talking up the headset, talking up the stem, talking up the stem bolts, making sure everything's to spec, 
even your through axles have a torque setting so make sure you do them correctly pedals that in newton meters on these you know, chain set bolts just checking those as well i just run my way right the way through a bike with a torque wrench it takes a little bit of time i mean you can see here i'm using a different torque wrench to the other bolts there's the snap on one which has got the left-handed thread torque in which for the pedals is essential i used i actually use three torque wrenches in the phase of going through a bike like this they're all, all for specific purposes but I do go through everything and check as much as I can with the torque wrench. I always do the bottle cages and things by hand because you don't want to over tighten those and some plastics won't take a torque, they'll break or carbon so we just do those by hand. And then the final little detailing is to get this new bar tape on here and you can see that the aero part of those anal bars isn't taped which is why all those cables had to go inside because we didn't want those hanging down afterwards so it's important to get that nice and then the final part of any service is to pump up those tires and as you can see this specialized is is i mean it was a beautiful bike but we've just finessed it and got it perfect for the rider so he shall enjoy this for a few more miles until his next service but thanks for watching don't forget our discount code bikespeeds50 for your sports barista and we'll see you next week